Hi, this uh, set of tutorials is going to talk you through the, the basics of setting up artificial lighting in 3D Studio Max 2019. Um, I've got a couple of a uh, few renders to show you initially. So this is a this is a very simple space, and um, we're adding some lights, of different shapes, and different uh, styles to them. Um, you look at this and you think that's you know that looks pretty good, um, but actually there's there's something kind of inherently wrong with this image in that there's actually no no light sources. But the, the light is just kind of miraculously appearing in different shapes and in different positions. Uh, so what we need to do is kind of model some objects that will appear to to give off the light. Okay, I've got a few more uh, slides, so I'll, I'll just nip back to these. So. This one is uh, using a material to generate the light, whereas the one before, this is using an actual light source object. Okay, so you get a different, different appearance, uh, different kind of render settings, different quality, but you can see even though this square here is emitting the light, um, it's, it's going through the colored object and it's casting you know, colored light around the room. So it's very accurate. Uh, now bear in mind what, this is going to be done using the ART renderer. Um, kind of, it's because it's kind of built into the software. Um, it's easier when it comes to teaching. We don't have to kind of pay for plugins and things. Um, but the principles are generally the same. Whichever renderer you're using, usually the kind of the settings for lights tend to be pretty similar across the board. Okay, and here's a, another render. Um, just. Change one of the uh, sphere, copy of this sphere, <coughs> put a very reflective material onto it, so you can see, you know, how the, the light sources and the objects generating the light, you know, properly reflect into other objects as well. Uh, notice the, the the shape of the light cones here, very different from the the, the previous one. These are, this one is much more kind of realistic, and this scene was rendered using what's called an IES light. So it, it actually has the, the kind of correct bulb information for the for the for the fitting, and this gives you much more realistic lights. Uh, and it's not until you see this in comparison to the to the previous one that you you realise you know the, the subtlety and the the change in quality there. Okay, so let's uh, let's just crack on and uh, have a look at three D Studio now. So I'll just close this and. We'll open the file in 3D Studio. Um, we're going to need to set up some paths first. So there is a zip file that accompanies this, and um, if you then unpack that zip file and point 3D Studio to it, you'll be able to pick up the concrete material for the model and the IES lights when they're needed. So we customize, configure user paths. <coughs> external files add and depends where you've saved the folder okay I've got mine in uh, artificial lighting okay I'm going to add the sub path so it goes into the IES folder as well and use that path okay the model if you're starting with my model <coughs> Excuse me. It will uh, automatically set the units for you, but otherwise, remember, uh, I'll be working in meters. So, open file. Get to the right place again. Okay. Okay. So the file we're working with: simple space finished and open. Okay, now this is a daylight scene. Excuse <coughs> <coughs> me. <coughs> do apologise, got a pretty bad cold. Okay, um, so what we need to do is, is to make sure we're rendering at night time. Let's just do a quick test render here to see you know, just how daylight it is. Okay, so this is going to be useless for uh, rendering artificial lights because there's too much daylight. Okay, so the first job is to take the, the strength out of this sun positioner object. Now I've got this controlled 
using the materials editor. Okay, I'll give the editor a chance to catch up with me. Okay, you can see this slot here. This has been brought in from the environment. So if you look at the environment, okay, and you drag the sun and sky environment into the materials editor and you can then control it. Okay, so over here, wait, when you do that, make sure you instance it so that the two of them work hand in hand. So I've got the sun switched off. Okay, now we could put that on so we get a, a little hint of moonlight. <coughs> okay, but it's going to be way too strong. So I'm going to put all these numbers much lower down. So sun intensity, I'm going to put that at 0 0.05, sky intensity 0 0.15, and an overall intensity 0 0.15. Let's just do a, a test render. We want just this to appear like it's dark, basically. So we've got a chance for the lights to show up. Okay, so the sun here is, is still too strong. We're getting too much direct light from the sun. The other, the sky is looking okay. Happy with that. Um, Maybe just switch the sun off. Actually, um, put down again. Uh, let's see if let's see if that one's the one that's going to do the work. Just want to make sure we get rid of this. Yeah, that's a bit better. It's really, really down, isn't it? So a little hint of moonlight there. Okay, maybe this needs to be down as well. <coughs> Quick check. It's about the same. Just gonna go with that. So we've got that. Possibly a bit on here. But, uh, okay, so we're okay. We've got a dark scene to, to start with. That's fine. And uh, then what we'll do is place a light in the scene. So we'll add a light. Now there's three types of lights in 3D Studio 2019. You've got photometric, standard and Arnold lights. The Arnold lights uh, will only be controllable under Arnold, the Arnold renderer. If you use photometric they still work in the Arnold renderer. Okay, so do standard ones. Okay, but if you're rendering with ART you don't want to mix these up. So you either use standard or either use photometric. Don't mix the two up. They're completely different kind of intensity controls. So I'm going to go with the photometric because it gives us access to the uh, IES lights and better quality shadows generally. And more realistic fall off of the lights. They decay in a more realistic way. So we'll, we'll place a target light and I'm just going to use the top viewport and just click and drag. Okay, so it's similar to where you place a camera. Okay, I don't want to accidentally add any more lights just now, so I'm going to go to the select object button instead. Now this isn't very informative as, as the way the lights are working, so instead of standard, you can change this to high quality. And give it a few seconds, we should see the lighting up here. And the lighting and shadows is coming <coughs> from the scene lights. Okay, that's good. We can see something there. All right. What I want to do is have the the light and its target directly above each other. So, using a side view, I'm going to change the filter to lights, so I don't pick up any geometry. Click on the light source, which is the the, the ball, and move it up till it's near the ceiling. Okay, let's pull it up. Okay, so the two are separated by nearly three meters now. 
Okay, but it's the plan position that I'm more interested in. I want to get these two directly above each other. So if you use F12, it allows you to type stuff in. Okay, so I'm going to round these X and Y numbers. So I'm going to go 5 for X and 8 for Y. Okay, then click on the target with the light and put the same numbers in. So it was 5 and 8. Okay, and that way you've got your light and its target directly above each other. Now when you move the light, remember to pick the target and the light at the same time. So do a crossing window and you can then move the light and it stays vertical. You don't want them to be kind of pointing at the walls unless that's the design intent. Okay, let's see how that's looking. Okay, we're getting a lot more kind of light spilling around the room now. So now we've got kind of the basic, the basis of the, the setup, we can start looking at the settings for the lights. So I'm going to do that in the second video because there's a lot involved in the, the light settings.